uh, really important to go back to basics and make sure that we are really, really solid with the notes and the layout of the keyboard. Now, what you'll see, if I just pull up, um, which one shall I do? I think I will do this one first of all. Okay. So this is a, um, a picture of, of a piano keyboard. And remember, I will always send all this stuff out after the session. So what you can see there is a very, very small keyboard. Um, it hasn't got a middle C on it, but it doesn't matter for the moment. Now what you can see is the first thing you'll probably notice is that it's got black notes and white notes. Okay, And you'll also notice that those black notes are grouped in, in groups of two and three. Okay, and that pat that is a recurring pattern up and down the keyboard. You can see on this one as well, we've got, well, from the bottom, just ignore the one at the bottom there. Start with the group two, yeah? So two, three, two, three, two, three, et cetera, all the way up. Now, the first note that people usually learn when they learn about the layout of a piano keyboard is the note C, okay? Because it's, uh, it's an easy note to locate. Uh, it's easy to remember where it is. And it's also... Uh, useful because most people learn the C major scale as the first scale that they play when they learn to play the piano. Uh, so for that reason, um, and because when we start looking at harmony and everything like that, we're going to be working within the key of C major, I'm going to start with the key of C and we can work outwards from that. Now this is, the, this is a C here, okay? You can always locate a C on the piano by looking for two black notes together, yeah, and then looking at the notes to the left, okay? So that's always going to be a C. Every time you find a group of two black notes, wherever they are, the note to the left is going to be a C, okay? And you can hear, they're all Cs. So on this piano, even though my MIDI keyboard doesn't go all the way down there. That one, two, oh hello, what's happened there? There we go. That one, one, two, three, four, so we've got, you know, seven Cs on this piano. This would be a full size, full size piano. Um, obviously the next key up from that is going to be a D. There it is. Then we've got E, F, G, and A, okay, and B. Now what happens is, because the pattern is recurring and we get, you know, different octaves, it just goes, it just repeats over and over again. There are only, technically, seven notes in music. Just like there are, you know, 26 letters of the alphabet. So we've got A, B, C, D, E, F, G. After G, it goes back to A again. A, B, C, D, E, F, G. And the pattern just keeps going and going, theoretically, an infinite amount. Um, these black notes here are what we call sharps and flats. Okay? Uh, I'm not going to go into those in too much detail right now, but just know that they are, the black notes are a variation, I'll say a variation of the white notes. Uh, and they would, you know, they make a very nice sound as well when you play them all together. So that's pretty much all you need to know. Um, as long as you, I wouldn't expect you to memorize this yet. Uh, eventually, you probably will. This might even inspire you to sort of take up a little bit of piano playing, you know, in the future. I would suggest also that if you have a an electric keyboard, at home, like in the attic or in the cupboard or something like that, get it out, yeah? Because we're, we, you're gonna be using it. You'll get good use out of it. Um, if you haven't got one lying around the house or anything like that, ask someone if they've got one you can borrow, uh, or you can pick them up for really, really cheap, uh, you know, second hand. Uh, you can get them for about 20 quid. You know, it doesn't have to be anything fancy. It can just be something that plays a note when you press a key. It doesn't have to be big, it can be about that big. Uh, it's just, it's kind of like a guide for you more than anything. eBay. Yes, eBay. Yeah, eBay is a good one. So there we are. You can always locate a C 
to the left of two black notes. And if you can find a C, you can find any note. C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C. Okay? Pretty, pretty simple way of doing it. Um, I think that's all I'm going to do with that at the moment. Now then, the next thing. This is where the uh, the meat is, the meat of the knowledge that we're, we're learning tonight. So, the grand staff, okay? Now then, this is the grand staff. You will all be familiar with this. You will have seen this in your sheet music. Uh, you know, it's, it's, it's used, it, it, we use the grand staff in piano music. We use the grand staff in harp music. We use the grand staff in choral music. Um, probably marimba would use the grand staff as well. Xylophone might use the grand staff. Any instrument that covers a range from here, about here, to here, all those notes will use the grand staff. Single line instruments like violins, um, you know, woodwind instruments, um, brass instruments, they will only use one clef, whether that be a, the bass clef or the treble clef. So if they're a low, like a cello, will use the bass clef for the low notes. The violin uses the treble clef for high notes. Piano, harp, rimba, etc. They encompass high, all high and low notes, so we use both clefs. What you can see is they are joined the two, the, two the two staves, we would call these staves, okay? This collection of, of lines. That's one stave, that's another stave. They are joined at the, at the beginning there by a line and then by what's called a bracket. This black thing here, it's called a bracket. And it, what it does is it just tells you that's one line of music. There's another bracket for the next line. There's another bracket for the next line. Next thing I need to tell you about is clefs, okay? Now these are clefs, these symbols at the beginning. Just ignore the little eight under this one for a minute, pretend it's not there. This is called the treble clef, and this is called the bass clef. In piano music and harp music, the notes written in the treble clef, this stuff here, would generally, generally be played with the right hand and the bass clef with the left hand. But in choral music, obviously we don't use our hands to play, we use our voices. So the treble clef covers notes from middle C to, you know, about there, that note there, okay? So that's a C and that's an F. This one here, middle C, there, to that F. So all the notes in between there and there are covered within these lines, within these lines here. On the bass clef, this note and this note, well I'll go up to middle C, that note there is a G. Okay? And that note is a C. So you can see how they the, the, all the low notes, basically, go on the bass clef, and all the high notes go on the treble clef. If you're a lead or a tenor, you'll sing notes that cover from about there to there. If you're a bass or, or a barry, you'll cover stuff that comes from about there to there. And all, all these notes in between. Okay? Now then, what are the notes? That's the question, isn't it? So you look at all, you look at the treble clef and you look at the bass clef and you see all these lines and these spaces and these dots and you think, what, I don't know, how, how am I ever going to learn this? How am I ever going to memorise what these notes are? Uh, how can I just look at a, a piece of music and know what the note is? So what, this is, that's where this comes in, okay? Uh, I'll use this one here. So what we've got here is a sort of visual representation of with the keyboard and the notes underneath. Oopsie daisy, try that again. 
Where's that gone? There he is. Hiding. Okay. Um, just move out of the way a second. Reset that. Thank you very much. <clears throat> Middle C. Let's start at middle C. The note middle C here is shared between both clefs. You can see there that middle C is underneath the treble clef here and it sort of floats underneath the treble clef and it sits on its own little line. So not that, that note there is this note. Middle C. This lines up, you see there, E, F, G, A, B, etc. All the way up to G at the top, above the treble clef. What you'll notice, first of all, probably, is that, let's just ignore C and D for a moment, we'll go straight to E. E is on the bottom line of the treble clef. Yeah? So it has a line going through it, through the middle. And when a note sits on a on the on the stave, and it has a line going through it, it's said to be on the line. Okay. And when this this note here, the F, you can see how it's sort of in between these two lines. It's sitting in between, yeah. and that note is said to be in a space. So what we end up with is a collection of lines and spaces and notes fit on those lines and spaces. And depending on which line or space the note is on, it represents a different note, or a different pitch, rather, a specific pitch. For instance, with middle C, when you see middle C here, it's that note, that specific pitch. I'll give you another example. This B here, so that one, is this pitch. And it will only ever be that pitch, that B there. So as the notes climb up, it goes line, space, line, space, line, space, line, space, line. This one would be said to be in a space because it hasn't got a line going through it. Likewise, the D underneath would be said to be in a space because it hasn't got a line going through it. Middle C has got a line going through it, so that's said to be on a line. Although it's got its own little line, which is which we call a ledger line, which we're going to discuss later. So if I play from that C to that G, what I get is this. Pretty simple stuff. It's very, very logical when you think about it. Um, this, what we see today, the grand staff as we use it today, is the result of about 400 to 500 years of evolution in written music. The first written music was just dots that were like placed, they'd have like a little symbol and then just like little dots going up or down or lines to show where people should go up and down. And they kind of just had to estimate where they needed to be. They didn't have any specifics or anything like that, but then, you know, they obviously thought when the major scale and, and modes became more popular, you know, they thought, well, we should probably get some something sorted here. You know, people need to know what they're singing. Let's look at the bass clef now, okay? What you can see here, middle C, this note here, what we just uh, looked at on the treble clef, also occurs on the bass clef. And you can see it kind of, well, it looks the same. It's a note floating in midair with a line through it. So these two here are the same note, except this is middle C in the treble clef, and this is middle C written in the bass clef. So they are both this pitch. If I go, I'm going to go backwards, okay? Because it's a little bit easier to sort of get, get your head around if you go backwards. C, B, A, G, F, E, D, C, B, A, G, and then F underneath there. 
F, G, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C, D, E, F, G. From the bottom, so all these notes from the bottom of the top, to the top, sorry. And you can see how that just covers most of the notes on the piano. Going right from the bottom all the way to the very top. Now someone must have a question about this. Uh, is there anything that you don't understand or anything that you want me to be a little bit more clear about? It's more to do with the the, um, the piano. Yours is a seven octave piano, isn't it? Yes. And I, know, I noticed that your um, the middle C is logically in the middle of the piano. Yes, it is. Yeah, yeah, that's why it's called middle C. Fine. Um, uh, mine is a, uh, a five octave, octave piano, mm -hmm. uh, digital one I've got next to me. Um, and, and again, I, I believe that's in the middle of that piano. Yeah, it's yeah, yeah. It'll be the C, whichever C is closest to the, to the middle of the piano. I mean, what I'm using here, I'm using a MIDI keyboard, which yeah. is a which is a four octave MIDI oh. keyboard. So it actually only covers from there to there. Uh, my, my MIDI keyboard, so I can't physically play <laughs> the outer notes there because of the um, because of the size of my keyboard. But it's okay for the purposes of what we're doing. We don't don't need to go that far because we're only looking at this note, this F here, to this note, the top G there. So um, that is how the grand staff works, or that is how written music works that's how you identify pitch now if you have a keyboard already and you're looking to sort of find find your way around with notes and things like that the best place to start is always start from middle c always start from somewhere you know that you can identify like i definitely know this is middle c so i'm going to start from here and what you can do is you can just work your way out like a map almost you know that when I started playing the piano, that's the way I did it. I'm sure that most people who play the piano or any other instrument for that matter will have done it that way. They just find a note that they know and then you just work their way out and you just gradually become more and more familiar with with the map of things, essentially. Um, let's have another look at a another... It seems like it's, uh, it's, it's decided to disappear. It's okay. Um... There we go. Okay. Let's have a look at the oh yeah, this one. Okay. There are there are different ways to learn the lines and spaces. Now if you look at, at this as an example, there are a lot of lines and spaces here. Uh, and a lot of notes. Now how how do we memorize these? Because eventually we're, we're going to want to memorize these notes and be able to just identify a note just by looking at it. Like you would identify a word just by looking at it. We have um, mnemonics and patterns to use to do that. So if you look at this here, some of you might be familiar with this from if you took piano lessons when you were little, or violin lessons, or cello lessons, or anything like that, you'll be completely familiar with this. It's probably bringing back some memories right now. What we do is we separate the lines and the spaces, and we learn them uh, with mnemonics or rhymes. So the, the treble clef, we have the bottom. The bottom line on the treble clef is an E. Okay, if we get rid of the spaces, just ignore the spaces for now, and skip up to the next line, we come to a G. If we skip up to the next line again, a B, and so on, D, and F at the top. This gives us E, G, B, D, F, which would sound like this. Now you can see how it follows the pattern on the piano. You just skip a note every time. Just like you're skipping a space on the music, you're skipping a note on the piano. E, G, B, D, F. Has anybody ever heard 
every good boy deserves football before. Probably will have. If you've had any sort of form of music education in your entire life, you will have heard that phrase. Every, every good, boy... good boy deserves favours. Favours, yeah. yeah. Or food. <laughs> I don't really like the food one, though. Every good boy deserves food, because that implies that naughty children don't deserve to be fed and they should be starved, but, you know. E-G-B-D-F. The next one, as you probably already noticed it, is the spaces, and that just spells face. So that's a really easy one to remember. The bass clef, this one. Now, there are lots of different ones for this one. You've got G, B, D, F, and A for the spaces. Oh, by the way, we always read from the bottom up. G, B, D, F, and A. The one I like to use is grizzly bears don't fear anything. That's the one I like to use. Or grizzly bears drive fast Audis. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah, there's loads of different ones. You can make your own up if you want. As long as you can re remember it, that's absolutely fine. <laughs> this one, when we when we take the spaces, we, we, we just highlight the spaces. We've got A, C, E, G. And that one is... any. Does anybody know what this one is? All cows eat grass. All cows eat grass. There you go. Yeah, no, but it's just a piano teacher to come on and say that one. Yeah. All cows eat grass. All cows eat grass. Now, it, it takes a little bit of time to sort of sort them out in your head and you know file them in, into the correct uh the correct ones but just with a little bit of repetition it, it comes really really easily um but you will get you will get this uh, i'll send it all to you so you can use it you know get it up on your on computer screen and everything like that when you're doing the worksheet so that's the way that we do it so we've got every good boy deserves football and face with the treble clef and grizzly bears drive fast audis and all cows eat grass for the bass clef so that's how we go about learning the notes. Um, there are other ways to do it as well. You know, if you if you yourself can find a more uh, efficient way for you to learn the notes, then by all means, just go ahead and do that one. Um, we've got a more detailed one here, with, which is which covers all the notes on on a, on a modern wow. keyboard. So it's a huge <laughs> one. Okay, so this is like your standard sort of keyboard. That you find the grand piano or something like that and these are all the notes on that keyboard and what you'll see is yes middle c there see how it meets in the middle that's middle c and it meets in the middle there there's middle c on the bass clef there's middle c on the treble clef but you can see how there's a crossover now this this leads me quite nicely into the next thing actually which is ledger lines okay so i'm going to cover ledger lines now Ledger lines are these. Can you see these extra lines and spaces below and above the stave? These ledger lines are for when you want to play or write or sing a note that is not within the compass of the stave itself. So it's not on the treble clef, it wouldn't, so if it's not, if it doesn't go from here to here, if it's not any of these notes in between, it's, it might be this one, high note, which would be, where is it? There, that's C. You can see there, it's got a line underneath and it's got another line and the note is on it. These lines are called ledger lines. And they're basically just extra, extra lines and spaces like little shelves for the notes to go on. And depending on whether or not the, the note is on a line or in a space, you just count up normally like you would. So if I go, for example, from this F here, I'll go from this F, okay, which is there. Sorry, no, it's not that one. There it is. This F here. So I want to go further. So I'll go to this G, okay, you can see I'm sitting on the top. If I want to go a note further, I'm going to have to put an extra line. That one, for that A there, there it is. If I want to go a note further, I need to go higher up. Now, do you notice that there's no extra line above, just the extra line below? We don't need an extra line above because we can tell that that note is in a space just by using one line below. If it hasn't got a line through it, then it's obviously going to be in a, in a space. The next one, which is the highest note on my keyboard, can't go any further. That's C there. So we, we would count up like this. F, G, space, A, line, B, space, C that one okay now we can use 
ledger lines to go further down into where the base region, but still use the treble clef. You can see here, there's middle C, and it's going down, 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 down into the bass clef region, ending on that D there. So these notes, middle C to there, that D. All those notes in between. And you can see there's an overlap with the bass clef. This lowest note here, I don't actually have this note on my piano, but it's a very, very low F. I mean, don't don't think you'd never sing this F. I don't. Well, I'm not sure if there's anyone alive today who can sing that F. Probably is somewhere. Or Russian. Russian, probably. Yeah. So F G A B C D E. Bass singers. I mean, you wouldn't you wouldn't go probably any lower than an E, especially in barbershop. I mean, E is pushing it. D is pushing it even more. C is kind of unheard of. You have to have a very special, special uh, biological makeup to hit that note. You can see also there's an overlap that goes into from middle C here, on the, using the bass clef going into the treble clef. So that's what ledger lines are for. They're just extra lines and spaces. I don't think I need to say anything more about that. But does anyone have any questions, or comments that they like to make, or anything that you think I I might have missed? No. Hi Danny, just um, just know. like you've got the top one on the bass clef, start, uh, on the bass stave, sorry, start finishing on B, would that be as high as it would go? Would you then transfer it over to the, the treble stave? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, ge generally, actually, in piano music and choral music, usually, you would transfer over much earlier than that, usually by an A. I mean, that in most piano music that I've ever played or, or music I've ever sung, I mean, I hardly, hardly ever see any notes that go any higher than that in the bass clef before they transfer over to the treble clef. It's, you know, it, it's all the, the the main rule is is make it, is make it easy to read. The main rule is to just make it easy to read. Uh, that that's. That's Sounds it. good. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. We make it as easy as possible to read and e as as uh, nice to look at as possible. Uh, because I mean, if you think about, um, uh, I don't know, a, a, an orchestral rehearsal or something like that, uh, where you've got a lot of players, they come in and uh, you know, the the conductor might give the the violins the sheet music and they've never seen it before, and he's like, right, okay, let's do a run through, and they all start bang, and they're all sight reading. Now that music has to be as clear and as simple to read as possible. So if they, if the violins are sort of given notes that are down here, I mean, they hardly ever see notes like that. So they're just going to struggle to read those notes and they're going to have, the music's going to sound terrible. They're going to have a hard time doing that, you know, so they would either change clefs or there, there are other things you can do to indicate that the note needs to be played lower. I'm not going to go into those right now. Uh, yeah. So, you know, you get, you get the idea, you get the idea. Um, yeah, okay, good. Uh, uh, just one question relating to singing, actually. Um, as, a, as a lead, uh, you occasionally direct us to uh, switch into, um, uh, you know, a higher voice. Is that normally shifting our voice by one octave? Uh, are you talking about falsetto? Yes. Uh, no, um, uh, falsetto is, um, is, is, a, is a different thing. So falsetto... Uh, it means going into like false, false voice. They call it false voice, but it's not. It's not really false voice. It is your voice, but it's just in a range that you wouldn't normally use. It's it's not to do with um, jumping up at any certain interval. Uh, most people have a natural break in their voice where they go from using uh, their their what they call the full voice to like um, uh, uh, what's the word? It's it's like it's not your normal voice. It's the difference between you know. Head voice, my, they're called. Yeah, head voice, yeah, yeah, head voice. And my break is around, like there, that's where my break is. You can hear it like switching over and then, and then you can go higher. That would be falsetto. So where you get that, like, you can feel where the break is. Once you go past that break in your voice, you're in falsetto. 
uh, um, it just means that you're sort of using a different part of your of your of your of your voice to sing with. That's basically what it means. But it's nothing to do with sort of where you are uh, on the music per se. Okay, thanks. Yeah. Okay. Any, anyone else like to say anything or questions? I think. Uh, I'm Graham? wondering the octave notations like C one two, C one. C2, yeah. C3. Yeah. After C0, does it go to C minus uh, one? Oh, uh, yeah, actually, that's a good, that's a good question, actually. Um, there are some pianos uh, and, th you know, th that do use lower notes than that. Does it go to C minus one? Um, I think, uh, do you know what? I, I think it does. I think it does. I think yeah. Bosendorfer, the piano... The piano manufacturer Bosendorfer make a pia pianos with a with an extra octave on the bottom, um, and I Oops. think I think it is. There called, you go. You're unmuted now. I, I think it is called um, C minus one. But yeah, okay. C zero would be well, would be one octave lower than that. There you go. C two, C three, C four. Yeah, C five. It just refers to the octave, the number of the you know uh, of the octave. Okay, I think Graham was trying to say something or ask a question. Uh, do you want to unmute yourself, Graham? He, he's talking. Yeah. Can you hear me now? I can hear you, Graham. Go ahead. Loud right. And clear. Okay. Uh, oh, it's gone off again. No, no, it's all right. I can hear you, Graham. Go ahead. You can. Okay. Yeah. Uh, the samples you gave us now on the, the keyboard and you said you're going to send them out to us. I've yeah. been trying to I've been trying to write them down on a piece of paper, but I can't keep up the speed you're going, of course, especially on the last sample, which is a full the full keyboard and all the notes and the A2. You have to have, a pretty, and, you have, to have, to have a pretty quick hand to draw that out. <laughs> exactly. Yes. So will you be sending that out to us? Oh, yeah. Uh, everything. Yeah. Everything gets sent out. Don't worry. Great. Yeah, OK. Have it all there. I, I say I'm trying to catch up, but by, by, by writing it down so I, I can refer to it later. Of course, Graham. Yeah. Don't worry about it. It's all going to be it'll be with you soon. OK, great. OK. okay. Lovely. Thanks um, very much. No problem. No problem. Uh, OK. I think I'll stop there. Um, yeah, good. So was that session a little bit longer? Uh, I think it was slightly longer.